Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are. On the face of this very planet, we welcome you to a landmark edition of our broadcast this very unique day, the 15th day of January 2020, with the time now standing at approximately three minutes past 7 p.m. in the sacred land of Biafra. I welcome each and every one of you. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you, irrespective of where you are domiciled. We are coming to you live. We are direct and, of course, interrupted. As we know, they will try to do each time we advertise on time that we are going to be on air. Our enemies are not resting. We are not resting either. It is our responsibility and our duty to redouble every effort to ensure that we stretch every sinew in our body in the propagation of this message of hope, of restoration, this very message of enlightenment, a message of renewal, a message of a new birth, a message of the emancipation of not just the people of Biafra, but everybody unfortunate enough to inhabit the sub-Saharan African continent. Because Biafra is the light, they acknowledge it secretly, they openly postcon on it, but we know it and we proclaim it to the hearing of humanity that Biafra has come to stay. There is nothing our enemies can do about it. We are resolute and we are determined. We are relentless because we will not retreat. We will not surrender. Our march towards Biafra is inevitable. The sovereignty of Biafra is a certainty that there is nothing our enemies can do about it. This evening, we shall enlighten ourselves. This evening, we shall lecture. This evening, we shall tutor our people. This evening, we shall bring to the knowledge of humanity the level of conspiracy, the level of hatred, the level of destruction that these forces of iniquity have joined together to unleash against the children of the Most High. We make no apologies to anybody. We are a special breed of people. Very, very special. We make no apologies. We are the best of the best, the finest of the finest that you can find anywhere. No apologies whatsoever. The fact that some evil forces doing the bidding of Lucifer have risen and connived against Biafran people will not and can never make us forget who we are, where we are going to, and the inevitability of the rest restoration of the kingdom of heaven upon the face of this very earth. And that is Biafra. Our enemies understand it. It is about time that our people also do understand it because we are not going to stop until Biafra is restored. They have been lying to us for very many years. They tell us all manner of nonsense that the war has ended. Of course it hasn't ended. Who told it has ended? Those people congregating, I don't know where they say that. Always in Lagos. They cannot congregate in Enugu because it's polluted. They cannot congregate in Ogwere because the gods of the land are against them. They cannot congregate anywhere in Biafra land because they know they have polluted the land. They run all the way to Lagos, as usual in their useless, senseless jamboree, talking nonsense always that the war has ended. If the war has ended, how come you watch a seaport is not working? If the war has ended, how come Wari seaport is not open? If the war has ended, how come Kalaba seaport is not working? If the war has ended, how come that is not an actual airport? If the war has ended, how come our roads are in such a deplorable condition? If the war has not ended, how come there is only marginal unemployment afflicting the youth of our land if the war hasn't ended? The war has ended my foot. Today we have come to preach this very noble gospel. Today heaven will bear us witness that here on this platform, 
we speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But before we proceed, I must remind our listeners from all over the world that the powers that be, those that have always maintained the conspiratorial and criminal stance that Biafra will never emerge. They have come again this evening. They are on our satellite. We cannot broadcast. The world cannot hear the voice of Unam, the canon, because they know we drive away demons, because they know very well that we speak the truth. They know that on this platform, this hallowed, this noble platform, this radio Biafra, that Chukwoki Kabiam out of the kindness of his heart, granted that we may use to propagate the gospel of the restoration of his kingdom upon the face of the earth that is why they attack us always today they have gone after our satellite that our radios in biafra land may not propagate this very gospel but they are mistaken because we are live on a whole host of platforms we are streaming live on facebook we are streaming on other social media platforms as well. They cannot stop us. They cannot stop us. They did not stop our fathers. They cannot stop us now in this very media savvy age. That is nothing the Janja Wade can do with the help of the British to stop us. Absolutely nothing. They will keep wasting their funds. They keep wasting their money. But the effort on our side is unrelenting. Unrelenting until Biafra is restored. Those who doubted us before, they have now come to their senses. They have now realized my name is Nnamde Kanu. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. And by the grace of almighty God in heaven, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra, we have been called to serve and we must serve. We have come that the truth may be spoken. It doesn't matter who is hurt or who is injured by the truth that we speak. That truth must be spoken in our time, in our place, this very period. We must pray. It is our duty, our responsibility, and our obligation to call upon the presence of the Almighty God in heaven, because we are as constant as the Northern Star. We do not move our position. Where we were yesterday is where we are today. People circulate around our pronouncements they gather and conspire around the policies that we have set in motion but ultimately they have come to the realization that we are always right everything we say is correct from their operation and motokun the security operations in the west to the issue of the Yoha in the supreme court everything has come home to this isn't it everything we have said to those that castigated us when we said that voting is useless in the zoo, to those that kept quiet when Onoyan was sacked, to those whose only job is to recycle the same mantra always, the same discredited irrelevant mantra of one Nigeria, let's work in harmony, in peace and in unity. They are busy killing us, they are busy slaughtering us, they are busy rendering us homeless, they are busy beheading us, they are busy raping our mothers, and all you can think of is one Nigeria, take a food out in the ocean. You gather in Lagos to do the end. Do you see how mad these people are? Because I let me pray to Elohim before the anger that I have within me for these faithful faithfuls will boil over. I cannot speak against the Holy Spirit. I must maintain a very dignified stance because humanity is listening. They want to know what Biafra will become, and that is what we are here to tell them but we must pray you must excuse me you must pardon me i will pray in the language of heaven because before the almighty creator in the place that no human can go to the angels surround the throne of the almighty they bow before him you are holy you are holy you are holy we make no bones about it we proclaim our faith very boldly and without any fear that we don't have any other god apart from the almighty in heaven the creator of the heavens and the earth that we said let there be light and there was light 
we go through all manner of pains and tribulation that your will may be done upon our lives that the spoken word that came forth from your mouth that you will deliver your children may come to fruition in our time that is why we have every hope that biafra will come because there is no other than thee there is nothing that could be compared to the elohim nothing absolutely nothing you are the beginning and the end if we start now to praise thee until eternity your goodness upon our lives you cannot begin to recount them all therefore we say that every adoration every exaltation every praise every honor belongs to thee the only majesty the only giver of life the beginning and the end the architect of our existence because only thee can make Biafra come. It is not within our might, not within our powers. We are mere mortals. We are nothing. We live, but only betting flesh. For one day we shall pass on, but your word shall remain forever. Therefore, we call upon thee to have mercy upon us. We call upon thee, O Elohim, to grant us your grace and your mercy that the fulfillment of the purpose for which Biafra was constituted in the realm of the divine, maybe manifestedly made abundant in the lives of those that inhabit this very decade. Therefore, we call upon thee to please have mercy upon us. The Janja Weida in our territory, they continue to use those who cannot say no to additional bag of one million naira. The same thing that the British did when they came. So are uh, the Janja with the Fulani Caliphate doing to us today. There is almost an endless convoy of the Fulefus who are willing to betray their own people, willing to betray your children. May their faith, O oh Heavenly Father, be worse than that of Judas Iscariot, I beseech thee. Be merciful unto your children. Come and have mercy upon us come and give us Biafra in our time that the world may know that we are your children therefore have mercy upon us forgive us our trespasses especially those who see in the dark and turn to prophecy of the informants we ask the Elohim to forgive us in any way our ancestors may have heard please have mercy upon us and remember your word to your children that you will never abandon us. Now is the time we beseech thee. That Biafra may come and your will may be done upon this very earth. Now and forevermore we pray. He said, He said, He said, This evening we are going to lecture this evening. We are going to announce things that they have hidden from us from of old. And as usual, our analysis will come precisely from independent sources, not anything that could be attributable to a Biafran, not anything that the world may use to go on their propaganda trips all over the world via the zoo embassies, via Nigerian embassies to say that we concoct news items. Here we are going this evening to bring to your knowledge the dubiousness of the existence of one Nigeria and the role of the British in it. I want to very definitively this very evening put it to rest once and for all that Nigeria never fought Biafra because we are Nigeria to fight Biafra. Biafra will defeat Nigeria every blessed day. 
the war that they claim they claim that war still going on till this very day the war that they claim ended in 1970 that war that is still raging till this very day was fought between the british and the biafrans nigeria was just a proxy for those who are educated enough to understand the meaning and the context which i am using proxy this very evening nigeria biafra war was a british proxy war against the stubborn biafrans as i shall demonstrate this very evening when i hear people talk about Mutala mohammed when i hear people talk about the dead buhari when i hear people talk about Gowan, i hear people talk about Obasanjo, about Adekunle, and all those they claim fought in that very war i want to put it to all of them both those who are dead and alive that it was britain that fought biafra not nigeria fact that will be demonstrated beyond every reasonable doubt this very evening therefore you must get your pen and your paper ready because we are going to dissect that very war they claim the war that has continued till this very day but they are running around in lagos claiming it ended uh, let it not happen again it's happening they are beheading our people they're raping our women they're establishing their colonies and their settlements in enugu they came into nimbo they came to Zowani. I don't know what people are saying. It has finished. It, is, it has even intensified in recent times. What finished? Maybe in Lagos it finished. Because the Fulani succeeded in mirroring what the British did when they came to colonize our people. They get one or two Fulefus from somewhere. They promised them a chieftaincy title. That was how chieftain, chieftaincy came into our land anyway. One and chief, chiefs, are, so to speak. As a matter of fact, that was how it came in. The British decided who should be the ruler of our people, not us deciding. The same thing they have done today in Nemo State, in the Supreme Court. The same thing they have done. People somewhere always deciding for us, always deciding for us. We have never made any decision ourselves as a people. Nobody asked us when they built their useless one Nigeria. No one asked us. When Zeke was junketing from place to place, he never asked anybody, should we belong or not? These are the consequences today. The events which some people foolishly and hopelessly accommodating in Lagos started from, from, from Zobo. Zobo, again, like Zeke, was fighting for one Nigeria. Why is it that our people cannot reason, nor learn, nor understand from history? Why? We are in this mess today because Azikiwe believed in one Nigeria. We are in this mess today because Nzogu was fighting to preserve one Nigeria. We are in this mess today because Agri Rossi introduced a unitary system of governance in Nigeria because he was fighting to save Nigeria. Each time we have tried this nonsense of salvaging Nigeria, of belonging to one Nigeria, we have come out worse all the time. Historically speaking, from 1945 to 2020, the same thing is still happening and what people do not learn they don't want to learn they don't want to understand until we are all destroyed in their foolishness until we are all destroyed our enemies are plentiful very very plenty you must understand this we are the chosen children of god in heaven i'm telling you this and regardless of what we encounter in this very life it is a position it is a mantle that we cannot relinquish it is a position a very privileged and unique position from which that very pedestal we can never climb down because biafra can only grow from strength to strength i assure you we are broadcasting this evening people must understand this very very clearly only then can you begin to properly situate the achievements of IPOB. Some of you don't know the amount of enemies we are fighting. You have no idea. You have no conception. You have no knowledge, no understanding of what we are going to, what we pass through on a daily basis. You do not know. Facebook cannot share this very broadcast. If you go on my page, they will not allow you to share it. That is number one. We are fighting it. Even this evening, our proof, even writers use the agency. Every new agency in the world has been bought over. You must understand this. 
Every diplomat that comes to Nigeria in Abuja or Lagos, they have been bought over. You need to understand this. They have even come into our own land to buy over our own people. You must understand what we are facing. You must understand who we are fighting. You must understand the strength of our enemies. Today, our satellite is down. Our radios cannot speak. You cannot share this very broadcast on, on Facebook. Not at all. They won't allow you to. Now you understand it, don't you? Now you appreciate the enormity of the tax before us. That is why we must all, all of us, all of us must be part and parcel of this unique IPOB family worldwide. All of us must be together in IPOB because we are whiter than white and whiter than snow. Elohim revealed things to us years in advance. When we say something and we stick to it, you better join us, you better follow us. He must take as an example, a very clean, clear example. If one is needed, Fulani have taken over Imo State. Then they forgot one thing in their equation that we are IPUB. We are unstoppable. Facebook can hide the links to my page. They can hide the links to Radio Biafra, to Radio Biafra London. They can do whatever they like. They will do everything to suppress this very message of hope and redemption. But they can never, ever succeed. That I assure you. We are told that the war ended. This evening, please, uh, make sure you have enough data. Because our radio stations, I understand, in Biafra land, this evening, none of them is functioning. Our FM. Because Nigerian government have bribed our satellite providers. Each time they know that in the county is coming on air, they give them money, they shut out our, our satellite. They give one stupid excuse or the other. Satellite that we pay for, satellite that IPOB pays for on a monthly basis, a substantial amount of money. They shut it down because they don't want the world to hear the truth. Biafra is facing multiple enemies on many fronts. On many fronts, you must understand this. This is the minefield that we have to navigate on a daily basis. Some of the fulefus don't understand. Some people who are ignorant cannot appreciate the level of hard work we have to put in into this very effort to get the results that we are getting so far some of you have no idea you have no idea whatsoever none that was why ojuku failed ojuku failed because of the enormity of the task because of the enormity of the burden enemies everywhere because we are chosen people are envious of us because we are the chosen race to develop, to bring light into Africa. Without Biafra, Africa can never be developed. It is a statement of fact. Africa will never, ever. Another meeting and you, you can be as jealous, as envious as you like. That is your business. But that is the way that God in heaven made it. That for light to come into Africa, Biafra must be free. That is why Britain is doing everything within its powers. To, we are not fighting Nigeria. Stop. Nigeria is nothing. We're not even fighting Britain. They're the ones fighting us. Are we fighting them? Are we the ones that try to blow up um, an airliner? Is it not the same Alamaji that they're supporting? The same northern Nigeria. Now, the same Fulani are the one Nigeria. The same Sharia Nigeria in the north. Are the same people threatening Britain every blessed day. But Britain prefers to work with them than you ask yourself why we are judeo christians britain brought christianity into biafra land ask yourself why is it that britain doesn't want to go what have we done to them have you asked yourself that question before why is it that britain hates biafra so much that they are prepared to kill everybody in biafra land through the ginger weed they can't do it themselves they need the the, the alamajiri from the north to do it for them and the Alamajiri is smarting. Oh, they are very clever. They are very clever. Of course, they are not. We know it is Britain engineering everything. We know it's Britain doing the work for them. We know that. We encounter them. We go on our diplomatic missions. And we know what diplomats are telling us. But this evening, this gospel must be preached. Nothing. You see that go on that interview had knew nothing about the war. 
All he did was sit in Lagos. They bring arms. They bring Egyptian pilots. They bring soldiers from 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 Niger, from Sudan, to come and fight for them. They never fought any war. They never defeated Biafra. All of you going about saying, "Oh, Niger," you are talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Show me the evidence. Nigeria never defeated Biafra. Britain did, and that's what I'm going to prove to you tonight. They bribed CNN. BBC. They even brought you BBC Ibo. They brought BBC Ibo to us. Some of us foolishly are joining BBC Ibo. Let us they are agents of destruction within. They are working for the Fulani Caliphate. BBC Ibo is working for the that is what they have done. Because they know that they can buy over your so-called elders, they can buy over your politicians, they can buy over your journalists. They can do that very easily. It's money that they need. They give them money, they buy them over. That we remain unbuyable. They know they cannot buy a name. They can. You cannot buy IBOB. It's impossible. Our conscience, you can. It is impossible. And like a me, me, one, me, one. So it can never be done. Our pursuit is Biafra, and they know it. They come to you. We are going to Musan Center. Uh, we are going to discuss the end of the. Are you mad? End of which war? Who told you the war has finished? Fulani are in a boy, killing our people, raping our mothers. They're telling you the war is over. You cannot go to school in your own land. Your children are immigrating abroad to try and survive. And you're telling me the war is over. Let Ozemena in Lagos. Are you stupid? This is the type of leadership you have. Oh, and and the ocean. These are the criminals you have in our land. Pretending they go and play the journalists. The apex evil movement. Apex, apex. Every blessed day. But your life is the same. Your hopelessness is getting worse. Your mothers are being raped. You're not ashamed of yourself. Your grandmothers are being defiled in a point. You have a governor in a point. Our mothers are being raped in a point. And he does not. He said, he's telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm in ABC. I'm in PDP. I, I belong to everybody. What nonsense is that? Is that how you defend your land against these marauding invaders from the north? Is that how you defend your land? Obiano told us that uh, he's um, that he's working with Miet Yala in Anambra, and some people are clapping for them. You clap for them. You people are the problem. I do not blame the so-called leaders. I blame the sheepish idiots that. Oh my goodness! That praising for these people every blessed day. You keep praise singing for them every day, and our lives are getting diminished on a daily basis. You are the ones I blame. The war has not ended. And this evening, we are reminding the whole world that the war never, ever stopped. As a matter of fact, it is very subtle, we know, but they have intensified it. Intensified it, very much so. Very much so. Because things are happening. I assure you that things are happening. Very terrible things. There is a story published by the independent newspaper of United Kingdom. I am very, very sure that this lady, maybe she is a Biafran, I do not know, but her name is Ajibade, which means that she must have, like Onyeko, when he must have married somebody from Yoruba land. Her name is EJ Ajibade. She wrote for the independent newspaper in the UK. It's very, very important that we understand this. She was basically recounting her memories of the war, and she delved into some very detailed, what some people might consider slightly complicated history of the zoo called Nigeria. In this very article, she made some, I want to understand for the life of me why blacks cannot, I, keep, I say this every time we come on air, that there is something fundamentally wrong with black people that we cannot reason very well. I say it all the time, that we cannot reason very well. When your enemies are plotting your downfall, you must sometimes sit back and take stock and ask yourself, why is this happening? If we are not a credible threat to the new colonialists in the zoo, why will they shut down our satellite this very evening that I'm about to come on air? Why is it that Facebook keeps restricting people from going to my page? Why is it that some very notable Biafran writers on social media that I used to see their posts before I read and I comment. I no longer see, I no longer read from them, but they are there, they exist. 
Why are they doing all these things to us if we are not formidable? Why would they go out of their way to bribe one idiot called Denis Sabo that uh, I don't think she, I think he's a mercenary for Guardian. I think he gets money, he pays Guardian editors, they publish his nonsense. Why would they contract it just like that? To focus on what they claim to be. Let them work out to destroy IPOB. How can you destroy? How can you destroy something that created you? That's something that, that gives you relevance. How, how is that possible? But that is what they are doing. Because there is a conveyor belt of a fule food. There are people willing to trade their conscience on a daily basis to betray their own family, to betray their people. There are ways that they never finish. They never ever finish. They never ever finish. Nigeria, according to independent newspaper, and factually so, because they won't publish anything that's not correct, Nigeria was created by Britain in 1914. I have said this many times and I'll keep saying it because to other races, they may find it, um, uh, they may absorb it and work with it. But to blacks, we don't do anything with it. But I'm telling you again, Nigeria was not created by God. Nigeria was created in 1914. In other words, my grandfather is older than Nigeria. And I keep asking this question. Where did my grandfather come from? If Nigeria was created in 1914, and by then, Osif wasn't born. Tafabalewa was not born, or maybe they were about two or three years old. I don't know. And I will. But they're the founding fathers of Nigeria. They keep churning out this garbage every blessed day. And your brain, the more they churn out these lies, lie after lie, because they want to maintain one Nigeria. And for our people from the coastal region, that some idiots that will say Niger Delta or South South or South 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 South, whatever they or Midwest. Whatever new name they are now answering. Nigeria was created in 1914. 1914, not by God, but by the British. So Nigeria is a British interest. It was established for the colonial administrative convenience. It merged three separate cultures into one which is impossible it's like asking osama bin laden and donald trump to be in one country it can never work it can never ever work the value system of the patients for instance iranians is infinitely irreconcilable with that of say france or england that was how god made the whole world that was why he had the tower of Babel. that you may be different that you may speak in different tongues because you're not one people regardless of how much you pretend you can never be one unless through oath you subscribe to one way of life as they do in america before you become an american citizen you must take an oath of allegiance to the usa that is the only way there is no other way i'm just trying to lay out very brief background so you understand it the Fulani people are in the north, they conquered the Hausa people. They speak Hausa. So that gave the Hausa's impression that Fulani are with them, but indeed, Fulani ravaged and decimated them. These Fulani nomadic people went to Yoruba land, to Kwara State, to be very precise. They, they took Yoruba land from them. They converted the Yoruba people into their version of Salafist Islam. Janjaweed. In the East where we come from, we are predominantly Judeo-Christians. They acknowledged it. We, we are Judeo. I use Hebrew or Judaism to describe the way we were before the white man came. When we used to go to Arochuku, the same way you have the Kotel, the Temple of Solomon, rebuilt by Herod the third and by Hezekiah on Temple Mount in Jerusalem. The same way they have a temple there was how our ancestors had a temple in Arochuku. A temple, temple, not church, temple in Arochuku. For those who do not know history, but when I read from them, I, I laugh. That is why every of our children we glorify God in heaven by the name we give to them. There is no other God, Chinkuku, that very mighty one, the almighty, the Alpha and the Omega in heaven, was the God we are worshipping before the British came. And thankfully, we have gone back to that same God, one irreducible God. Not He doesn't divide into two, into three, into four, into six, into ten. No, one. 
our Father in heaven, as the Lord's prayer made it very clear to us. Very simple and very straightforward. I want to pull out some of these things so you understand your history very, very clearly. Only then can you understand where the enemies are coming from. Only then can you know where they are coming from. Biafra only left the zoo, did not succeed. We were not one people. Nobody asked us who, who, where we wanted to belong to. It was a project by Nam Diazikiwe. Zobu took over after a while. He wanted one Nigeria. He grew up in Kaduna. His nickname was Kaduna. He wants to be one Nigeria to make people feel happy about one Nigeria. The same thing some so-called intellectual buffoons are doing in the South today. Every time they are talking, they keep saying uh, uh, every part of this, you know it is impossible to civilize the North. You know it is impossible. They cannot be like Dubai. They cannot be like other civilized places like Qatar or Oman or, or, or Bahrain. Never. They can never be. These are the majority territory. Street beggars by nature. Cattle headers by nature. You can never change them. But those of you in the South, either Yoruba or Igbo, all of is, is what Nigeria lets us build our country. It can never be great. It's impossible. It can never be great. Nigeria can never be great. You have ingrained al majority feudal system in the north, which you can never change. You can never change. Instead, they will al you in the south, which is what they're doing now with the organization, with the Islamization policies. But you do not know because some of you are daft. You don't reason very well. You claim you're together with 10 PhDs, but your brain is empty. When we told you the simple truth, your PVC is useless. You thought, oh, it's, it's democracy. It's, 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 it's put in Plato. Socrates, all this nonsense. Look at your Plato and Socrates at the Supreme Court today. All those damn nonsense you are writing, all those things that uh, uh, Hobbes said, uh, something that Abraham Lincoln said, Akobo, it's finished now in the height in the Supreme Court. It's gone now. All that your PhD nonsense, all that thesis, all that theory, how PVC can help build the road, how PVC can build Second Niger Bridge, how PVC can make the rain come, even drastic, how PVC is, is asset to everything. Have you seen it now? Why? Because people who do not believe in democracy are in charge of this. Biafra did not succeed. We left when they started killing us. Why did they kill us? Nzobu, let me tell al I hope that I hope everybody is listening this evening very clearly. The coup came about because Nzobu, an evil man, wanted one Nigeria. He wanted a good Nigeria. Some, some nonsense some of them are doing today. They want this Nigeria to be progressive. Everybody will go to school. But they not, don't want their children to go to school. Now, as if you will ask them to send their kids, they said no. I will ask them to send their kids to school. They said no. They told the British, we don't want that to education here. That is the meaning of Boko Haram. From the beginning, this is Boko Haram you're seeing today. From the beginning, their MA has never wanted their children to go to school. Never. If they don't go to school, how are you going to civilize such a people? How is that possible? I'm asking you. They can't read, they cannot write. You have professors who can barely spell their names and you're saying oh we will build we, this country is going to be great if it's, you know you're lying to yourself it is impossible Nzob was said he wanted to be part of one Nigeria Nzob was angry with Ahmad Bello and all the corrupt politicians from the zoo for stealing money anti-corruption crusade he went ahead and they started killing people they killed people in the north in the west but no Igbo politician of note was killed. Listen very carefully, that is the truth of the matter. Are you going to kill Dr. Michael Obara? That at his time had the fastest growing economy in Africa. The economy of Eastern Nigeria under Obara was growing at a rate of 40% every year. Listen very carefully to this, to what I'm saying. I said 40% is 40% every year. How can you kill him? Alamajiri got upset. That uh, Michael Obara wasn't killed, and that girl was not killed. They went on a rampage and they killed top ranking Igbo officers. They eliminated all of them in the army. That was how they started. They killed every Igbo officer in the army they could lay their hands on. They killed Aki Ronsi. It wasn't enough. The likes of very genocidal Buhari. Then he, listen, he was 33 years old, oh, Buhari, then, oh, 
but he's still 71 today. I saw the claim. Buhari, as a 33 year old, wanted to avenge the death of the Sadwana. He wanted to, what they came to do in our land was what they did with the Mecca of to kill everybody and allow only children from the age of 10 male to survive. That was their plan with the British. These are according to official government papers released in Britain. Their plan was to kill every male child in Biafra land. You know the thing about it, when they commit these atrocities and you ask them, oh, it's propaganda, it's propaganda. But their own documents, their own war records, their own archives always prove us right. It is there. They failed. Now listen to the catalog of mistakes that put us in this mess we are in today that some of you writing for your Fulani masters on Facebook or other social media platforms. I want you to understand this very clearly, that the nonsense you're doing today, promoting one Nigeria has been done before in the past. Look at where we are today. One Nigeria was promoted by Azikiwe. One Nigeria was promoted by Ironsi. It was one Nigeria that led Zogo to the coup, January 15 coup of 1966. He wanted to preserve one Nigeria. He grew up, if I, I, I grew up, I'm, 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 a, I'm a detribalized Nigerian. My name, he speaks Hausa very fluently. He had Yoruba friends, he had Hausa friends. He was very close to, to Abbasanjo. Look at the mess we are in today. Some of you, having seen all the mess we are in as a result of the, 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 the one Nigerian misadventure of Zeke, uh, uh, you don't see and the rest. Some of you, even 2020, are still committed to that rubbish of your one Nigeria. Our sister is telling us here that millions of Biafrans died as a result of deliberate government policy of starvation by a will over. I will over, I will over thought the same. That is why I like, I'm being very honest. You see, this generation of Yoruba, this very one, these ones we can work with. You see this this generation that set up this Amotekun or whatever they call it, this uh, for, is it, uh, operation Amotekun, these very people, this generation of Yoruba that set up vigilante. I'm not talking about the the Yoruba of um of Tinubu, those that have sworn allegiance to the caliphate. I'm talking about the proper Yoruba. Those that set up this vigilante, we can work with them. And we must commend them for what they have done. I never knew they had the courage to do it, but they have done it. And I commend them. And if they need men, we will supply them men. And we, I can assure them tonight. And heaven will bear me witness. I am a Biafran. Everything I say, every word I utter, I stand by it. And I say to Europa today, they will, we will stand by them through thick and thin. If they, if they need a million men, we'll give it to them. To make sure that Fulani will not destroy what they have set up. We are prepared to do that. We have gone beyond the history of the past. That we can assure them this very evening. Without any provocation. That IPOB, the entire Bia by IPOB, I mean the whole of Biafra. We speak for Biafran people. We are saying to them today, this generation of Paaya Debanjo, that man, may God bless him, Paaya Debanjo, this generation of Yinka Odumaki, this generation of, of course, my very dear friend and, and dear brother, uh, Kayode, Femi Kayode, who I credit with making the Yoruba people very strong. This very generation, this very generation that set up this Amoteku or whatever they call it, we can work with them, I assure you. We can work with them. They starved us to death. Of course, despite everything that Awolo did, we will work with them because it will not go down. This, well, of course, our, our own, you know, will come in spectacular. We started everything that is happening today. You know, we did, we did with BSS. And do you think we have forgotten? Of course, now we are coming back in style, in very massive style, very soon. Result, you know, we do things in a very special way that catches the attention of the whole world. But some of you don't know how far we have gone. Very soon, you will know. 
We fought to free ourselves from Nigerian oppression and from the lingering vestiges of poisonous colonialism. That is why, listen carefully, let me tell you the meaning of poisonous colonialism according to our sister. Very poisonous colonialism. It's called neocolonialism. That is why a Jokuta steel mill can never work. You know, they have a Jokuta, but it's not functioning. You know, about textile mill, they sold it to some Indians that shut it down to import textile from India. That is called poisonous colonialism. They don't want us to develop. Britain knows. A sizable, significant portion of Europe knows this. That Biafra is the key to Black Rib Biafra is the key. Auto got the key itself to free Biafra from bondage. They know. So what have they done? They focused all their effort to suppress Biafra. But you will not know. It's very subtle. Very, very subtle, you will not know. Every journalist working in Nigeria has been brought over by Nigeria. Has it every, each and every one of them. AFP, Reuters. See, large sums of money have been given to their CEOs to abandon Biafra. If you don't talk about them, nobody will know they exist. That's the trick they have used. Britain used it during the war. And where we managed to get any news out, Britain will write and say it is propaganda. That picture of a starving child is propaganda. Britain never came out till this very day to apologize for misleading the world. Nearly 5 million people died, according to Irish records, Irish Catholic Church. Britain sat on it. The second worst genocide after the Jewish Holocaust. But because we are black people, we don't own the media. We have nobody to give us arms. Nothing. They suppressed us. And after the war, what did we do? We did not learn from history. Jews we are killed. The same way they're killing us today. Jews we are killed throughout history. The Spanish Inquisition. Every, every manner of revolt. They blame them for it and they kill them. Until they decided that if we don't go back to Israel, oh, we will no longer exist as a people. That's why they went back to Israel. And they had to fight their way in. That is why what some of you want to do to us. As your full and you, Mbaka and his group. Mostly in Enugu. I don't, I don't know why. These idiots, they always be in Enugu. That is our one. All these idiots are not nonsense of it. They always in Enugu. I don't know this why that, that's the case. But thank God for the hard cause we have from Enugu. Uh, brother Chick of CHK that got us going from Enugu, hardcore. If not, I'm telling you. Hmm. The same nonsense you're doing now has been tried before. I'm saying this to them. They have tried it before. They did not succeed in getting us uh, to take a. So you think that um, Alamajiri will allow you, uh, uh, as a Biafran graduate, to come out and excel in the office and be looking at you? Do you think Nigeria will ever one one day have a level playing field? The people telling you about one Nigeria, ask them why. I, I can't understand this. Our people sometimes. You have a seaport in the in front of your of your of your backyard in Iguacha, in Calabar, in Wari. They shut it down and ask you to go to Lagos to go and import a container, and you cannot ask yourself a simple question: Is this fair? Oh dear me. We fought for freedom. And that nonsense is still going on till this very day. The killing of Biafran people still going on. Still going on till this very day. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. Biafra will never go away. That I assure them. Instead, Biafra is coming in our time. You know, I, I read in England, so I know how to fight campaigns in England. Some of you do not know. I gave you an example before of the Hillsborough disaster. They went time after time, no public inquiry, the police people who were found negligent, no, nobody, no, you can do whatever you like. We won't do anything about it. Eventually they got justice. It's something with the Easter uprising in Northern Ireland that some of you may not know about. They kept fighting until there was justice. This very IPOB, this very Biafra. I want to let, I want to assure Alamajiri of something. We are not going to stop. They said because Ujuku joined Nigerian politics and because um, 
uh, some people use the name of Biafra to go and enrich themselves with Nigeria. The same thing, Kanu. Kanu will do the same thing. We are waiting for him. He will do the same thing. They don't know me. They have no idea who I am. That this was the same reason why I was born. Only for this very work, nothing else. Only for this work. To restore the kingdom of heaven upon the face of the earth. That's where we have come. Nothing more, nothing less. So what are you going to give to me that is greater than the kingdom of God? I'm asking, so you, you're, you're coming. Oh, what does he need? Let's give it to him. Can you give me the kingdom of God? Which is what Biafra is. Can you give me the kingdom of heaven on earth? Which is what Biafra represents. You can't. So we are unbuyable. Take this ago. How can you buy us? We are unbuyable. That is what Britain did. There is somebody who wrote in an article titled, Who Killed Biafra? His name is Stanley Diamond. Some of you do not know that Medicine Sans Frontiers, this is uh, that um, Doctors Without Borders from France, started because of Biafra. You read it, maybe you come across it on social media, you read it and you just throw it away. Oh, it happened though, you throw it away. And you keep writing your one Nigeria rubbish. Oh, you you, you insulted the cape the matter. Uh, because of that, this year Biafra, you insulted uh, Nagumodo. Uh, this year Biafra. I look at these fools and I laugh at them because they are foolish. These people you are mentioning, are they not the people responsible for your hopeless state you're in today? That condition you're in today, are these people not responsible? Are they not responsible? Have you not seen what they have done in Yoruba land? Have you not seen what Governor Otto is trying to do in Benue state? Have you not seen what people do when they want to defend their own people? You have a governor from Anambra saying, oh, we are working with me at Yala. If you kill any Anambra indigenous, you both have 100,000. People are clapping, hey, we help governor. Unbelievable. after the war. I'm telling you people, I mean, some, some, some of you are a disgrace. I don't know how you can say you are a Biafran or you have a Biafran blood in you. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. I just don't. I cannot fathom it. Not for one second. This person wrote a very compelling article. Who killed Biafra? I can assure you it is not who. It's not Fulani. I, let me say, I say this to Britain because I'm an Anglophile. Everybody knows how much I love Britain. Their way of life i keep saying it that the most the most reasonable people if you go and you discuss with them you they are very reasonable they people they don't they're the ones who abolish slavery before usa they abolish slavery there are some bad eggs bad elements whose job it is to make sure that africa does not see the light some of you don't know this but we know because we go into places where people can't enter some of you can enter there. Some of the places we have been to, you can not in a trillion years, you can't go there. That was why Jubril was panicking and was saying to the US ambassador, uh, people with access, it is IPOB that talking about people with access to government all over the world. Where people can't enter, we enter that very place and petition. You must understand these things. Not uh, you, you pay one useless Denis of, of, of uh, uh, a, 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 a news contractor that can write for Lucy anything you ask you to write. Maybe on our own brother foundation, a village looking for cement and uh, gravel to complete the foundation. Maybe he kept Ramadi gave him some change. He took on the contract of uh, saying he will, he will rubbish IPUB. Looks <laughs> oh dear me. <laughs> Vanguard will be in trouble. Vanguard is super. He doesn't take time. This man wrote who killed Biafra. And from what he is writing here, it is very, very clear. It is very, very clear that those that killed Biafra, I want to mention them for you so you understand. <laughs> oh, dear me. Oh, dear. Unbelievable. 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 Britain. Remember that during the Biafran War was the Vietnam War, the height of the Cold War between the East and the West. <laughs> they were not meant to be talking to each other. But according to British government papers, Britain. Well, and when Britain goes to you in that time, and they don't, no, we don't want any escalation of the problem. You know, 
we don't support arms being given to either side to continue this war. People are suffering. But meanwhile, according to United Kingdom documents, UK government papers, not IPOB papers, not Biafra papers, the same British government went to Russia and asked Russia to supply Nigeria with weapons. Meanwhile, they were busy enforcing the blockade of Biafra's territorial waters. So we cannot receive any arms, either through the sea or through the air. Do you now follow me very carefully? The same thing that Oliver North tried to do in Nicaragua under the Reagan administration, they did not supply, they didn't want to supply the contrast direct. They went through Iran. Have you heard of the Iran contra affair? The same thing, exactly the same thing happened in Biafra. Britain, Britain, the creators of Nigeria, the colonial master, the, not God, the creator of Nigeria is Britain and not God. Anybody mentioning God is something from the complex. It was Britain created Nigeria. Britain went to Russia and said, these niggas, from, these monkeys from Africa jumping all over the place, uh, they are called Biafrans, those niggas, those idiots. They want to teach them a lesson to let them know that we are, we are the only people allowed to create them. Who are they to say no to what we created? Some of you don't know that they're boasting in Europe. When I ask them, they look at Africans and they laugh at us. They say, we created you. The boundaries you have, we created them for you. You are nobody. Once you're a Nigerian, you are a product of the British. You are nothing but a zoo animal. You must understand this. It's a simple fact of life. A very simple fact of life. They, they see how clever they are. You know, British. They are in the Okako. They package Nigeria very well. Uh, they said, no, we can't give it to Awolo. We can't give it to Zeke. These ones are educated. They went to school. <laughs> Let's give it to Alamajiri. So through Alamajiri, they can still control your life. And now, let me tell you how these things have now unfolded. Because today, Alamajiri is doing the same thing. You have seen the mathematics they have done at the Supreme Court. They have concluded that it is now also them. When everybody knows that you cannot, you nobody can win. The election to the House of Assembly was held on the same day as the governorship election in Imo State. But Fulani needs to control who controls you. So they gave you Ozodemma. Hope Ozodemma. So through Hope Ozodemma, as Britain is now doing to the zoo, through the Fulani Caliphate, they can control all of you in Imo State. They can bring in Ruga. They can bring in Fulani settlement. They can kill our mothers. They can rape. They can abduct. Nothing will happen. Do you see how they take you over? Those who claim that they are spiritually inclined, like they are religious, like Mbaka, who is basically a, a village informant, they go to him and they say, you know, your people, they love God so much. You know, they believe in God. Anything you say in the name of God, they will follow you. Why don't you say that God gave you a revelation that those of them will win? It's called kite flying. I know why IPOB kept quiet. Once he made that comment, it was kite. They wanted to test the water to see if they bring in us them, uh, uh, them, uh, if if Imo people will rise up or if there will be um, uh, some kind of um, 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 disquiet in the land. Once he said it, and the fools that some of us are, he went, oh, Mbaka's prophecy, Mbaka's prophecy. They said, okay, <laughs> those idiots are talking about prophecy. Let's give it to Hope Osadema. That's how he got it. That is how we are the architects of our own destruction. We bring destruction upon ourselves. Those idiots that write on social media, those fools that claim, oh, we are writers, we can, we can, we, we can write. Uh, we, the thing with it is that you spend one to two weeks writing an epistle. Have you seen any of them on a live one-to-one -one interview before? That they cannot pronounce common any common word in English. They struggle. But if you allow them, they go and they go to 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 uh, their their broken um, screen or, or, or Chinese phone. They type and they copy articles and they did from abroad. You say, hey, that that man is a watchmate. He has spoken. Do you see what he wrote? Rubbish. Put a microphone in his mouth live. I said, please tell me all those things that you wrote uh, in Facebook the other day. He won't tell you anything. Because he knows nothing. His brain is empty. They plagiarize. They doctor documents and they bring it and you think it is their original idea. They know nothing. 
if you want to know somebody like Tanko, they say Tanko is a, is a chief justice. Place microphone in front of him. I, I, I think somebody tweeted that after watching Tanko in Supreme Court, he, he lost every hope in the zoo. It's something I've been telling you from day one, but you won't listen. Those who fought the war was Britain. Britain was fighting the Gafran people because of British hatred for the woman. Britain hates us. Not every, not please, I must caution, not every British person know their government at the time that have carried the policy forward. And I will tell you why they are doing it till today. Have you seen the reaction of France towards the dismantling of CEFA, that currency that um, uh, through which France have been basically <laughs> enslaving some African, West African countries? That's normal. Have you seen it at all? That's the reaction. Imagine it's like building a house that you've put tenants in that very house. Every month you go and collect rent from your tenants. And somebody is telling you, oh, I want to dismantle this. The land is mine. I want to dismantle it and build something better. That's what we're trying to do. Do you think, will you say no? Even as a human being, will you say no? You will say, oh, oh, oh. will you say yes? Go ahead. Of course you will say no. That's what Britain is doing to us. Britain built Nigeria. They take pride in it. You know, do you know what it means? Uh, there is a song, not actually a song, there's actually a verse in the good book. It says, It's only God in heaven that can build a nation, not man. So when Africans allowed Europeans to come and create nations in Africa, what we did was to hand over, was to hand over to the to the British. What we did, in essence, was to hand over to the British that title or that very recognition which only god in heaven can have you must understand this that is why they don't want to see nigeria dismantled not that maybe some british people may not love biafra no but they created you know what it means to create a country they came they they huddled now allegedly 200 million people together in one cage called nigeria they love it that they, they created you some people come and say, oh, but God made Nigeria. Is it in 1914? Where is it in the Bible that God made Nigeria in 1914? Where is it in the Bible? I'm asking you, tell me where it's in the Bible that God made Nigeria in 1914. They say the will of the people is the will of God. I agree. But did the people actually come together to create Nigeria? Is the answer not known? Is the answer not known? I am asking, is the answer not known? How do you think, therefore, that Britain will allow you to break up their own creation? You are their toy. You are a toy to them. You are a plaything to them. They derive joy from it. It was Britain that fought Biafra, not, not Halamajiri from the north. They keep lying. They keep lying every blessed day. We, we fought the war. Our, our children fought the war. Very, very sad indeed. Britain wanted our oil. The same, you know, you know, they're very clever. The same, it is the same logic and the same argument that when you go to an evil man in it, where uh, uh, I read, of course, I know that's tongue in cheek, I'm not going to refer to that. Uh, uh, somebody will say, Oh, but you want us for our oil. Do you see how foolish certain people are? Naturally daft, daft by nature. 70% of the oil being lifted, 70% of oil being lifted from the coastal regions of Biafra land, comes from the hinterland, 70%. 70%. And Britain doesn't want to let go. So you must understand, hey, look at IPOB. We, of course, we are not fighting Britain, heaven forbid. No, of course not, we are not. But ideologically and morally, we are fighting them. This IPOB, and we are winning. We are fighting them and we are winning. It is only by the grace of Elohim that Biafrans exist till this very day. You know what they did? They use what is called gerrymandering. You know, they cover out the borders. They tell you, oh, you're no longer together. You're not one people. You are equally, you are from Abone. You are from Abone. But they're only speaking people, by the way. Their mother tied to this rapper with headscarf. We all know that very well. But no, you're not together. <laughs> but Alabajri will come from Senegal. Alamajiri from Futajalon and trace his uh, relatives all the way to Kogi. 
Unbelievable. And they always hold on to NMPC. It is their thing, NMPC. That is the interest of Britain. Britain is who controls the oil. That is why Britain will always fight. That's one of their own, in so-called Northerners, so, so to speak. Is at the helm of NMPC. Very, very sad indeed. Those who fought against Biafra. Even the State Department papers, if you go to New York, New York Times, it is there. It is the British that fought against Biafra, not Almaty from the North. The British did. Not like that soldiers want to come those that no, not you. It's the British that fought Biafra. If we are to fight the Alamajri, any blessed day will defeat them. And they know it very, very well. We'll defeat them. We will defeat them. Therefore, we must continue. The time now is exactly eight minutes past the top of the hour. Regardless of where you are around the world, this is a live presentation. Radio Biafra, they have shut us down on satellite. We are not transmitting on satellite this very evening. Our radio in Biafra land is not uh, broadcasting as a matter of fact. This very um, broadcast is not going out live to our people because our enemies are at work. Our enemies are at work, but we are defeating all of them. We are defeating all of them. There is another white person called Karen E. Smith. She wrote a paper, The UK and Genocide in Biafra. The UK, United Kingdom, was part and parcel of the genocide of the death of five million people because they want our oil, they want our gas, and they want to impose Alamajri over us. They see Biafra as the light of the world, and they want to extinguish that very light, that very glory that Chupo Kikabi and myself must fight for. We must make sure that Biafra is restored in our time, that his glory may descend from heaven to that very Africa that they have scorned for centuries. In late August of 1968, this is the UK and the genocide. A British proposal, Nigeria announced that it will allow international observer team into the country to show that it was not pursuing a campaign of genocide in Biafra. Even the world, they knew that there was genocide. But Britain always, I told you, Britain always at the forefront. Always at the forefront. British proposal. Uh, let her uh, come and see there is no genocide. It's just like when they killed us at Umpur, after the, the destruction at Umpur, and they're the ones that told the Fulani Alamajdi soldiers, if you kill them, take their corpses so there'll be no evidence. So when you tell them that our people were killed at Umpur, they'll say, oh, but where are the dead bodies? Any day we march, my goodness. Some of you, that those who know me, will always understand anything I say that I will do, I will do it. When I say the zoo will fall, the zoo will fall. Write it down on a piece of paper, the zoo will fall. Watch and see what is going to happen. Is only, will you have the stomach for it when, when we commence? Will you have the stomach to, so, even not now, now, when we ask you not to vote, that you're wasting your time, you start complaining. That place of mounting a sustained campaign for many years to be free. That is why I respect Eritrea and I respect Southern Sudan. I respect them. Freedom is not cheap. It's time to fight. We are coming home and we are going to do it. Unless they decide and give it to us so that we can go the same way we were before the white man came. My contention tonight is this. Britain cannot assume the role of God. You cannot do it. You are not God. You are a white man from Europe. You are not God in heaven. God is in heaven, not in Europe. I want somebody to go to Google tonight and type in who created Britain. Simple assignment. I ask you to do all the time. Write in there who created Germany. Write, go to Google and ask Google. Then write who created Nigeria. They'll tell you it's Britain. And then you tell me that you're the same as them. No, you're not. You're an animal in a zoo somewhere in Africa. Britain pushed for the observer team to be created to try to bleach out all the incriminating evidence against them. They were never ever objective. Some of you should go and research it. They, and, you know, in the North, they don't read. The highest place they get their news from is um, that very corrupt um, uh, channels TV and Daily Trust. That's all. That's the place they get their news from. And what do they know? And I'm actually, what well, well, the answer is no, they didn't, they're not educated, they're not well read. If they are well read, they will understand that Britain fought Biafra through them. 
they did not fight Biafra, they did not defeat Biafra. That is a statement of fact. A statement of fact. Britain was more interested in making sure, excuse me, that no arms got into Biafra. Meanwhile, they were busy arming Gowon, giving him all the arms. Uh, uh, we have the we have de defeated the rebels. We defeated the rebels. I, I led the second commando. We defeated the rebels. Oh, go, go. When it was Britain that actually did the war, fought for them. We came to Biafra and we tied our hands behind our back. We still fought the war for three years. That war, you can no longer fight. You're fighting it in very subtle ways. You shut down our industries. Our glass factory, our paint factories, none of them is working. Absolutely none. Even Nelson cannot receive any help from the government. They went outside to go and bring an outside firm to come in to give you whatever um, um, automotive um, needs that you may have. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Some people are still saying we are part of it and be salvaged. They have now given them their new nonsense, uh, 2023 uh, presidency. They see this 2023. That is where you will know how powerful IPOB is. And I'm saying it now. No amount of pressure, no amount of blackmail, no amount of rubbish will change our mind. Uh, that new hope of uh, uh, Igbo president, you should just abandon it. It will never happen. It will never happen. We allowed you. Can, can you imagine if we said to people, oh, don't vote? This thing now happening to, to, to hear your hand. They will say it is because of IPOB. I said that people shouldn't vote. It's because of you that people will be lost. Supreme Court being peopled by Fulani and uh, <laughs> reprobates are there delivering judgment that doesn't make any sense, which I'll get to later on. I tell me you want one Nigeria. Those who fought against Biafra are the British. There is also another article that I want you to read. It's called British Interest and Nigerian Tragedy. It is there in black and in white. Written by Michael Lipman. He got his information from cabinet papers, from cabinet papers in the UK, official government, UK government documents papers. Their hatred for Biafra, the UK hatred, natural hatred for Biafra, because we are a blessed people. They came to Arochuku, they saw our temple, they saw the presence and the light of God in our lives. They said it can never happen. These are black people. How can God love black people? That's why we are in this mess today. How Britain doesn't believe that God can love uh, black people. It's impossible to them. That's why they're doing what they're doing. But we're going to prove them wrong. The war is continuing. It hasn't ended. U UK government papers, all these idiots writing about one Nigeria. Nigeria defeated Biafra. Nigeria Biafra war. I ask you to do a little bit of research. Go and ask questions. Do a bit of research. Go and read up on document after document after document regarding the role the British played in the war. You will understand that Britain, the creator of the zoo called Nigeria, were the ones who actually prosecuted the war. And I'm very happy that these days a lot of people are beginning to repent. Those who were assaulting me before, they now repent. They now understand that we speak the truth. That if I tell you that Nigeria is a zoo, believe you me, Nigeria is a zoo. If I tell you that Nigerians are animals, I'm telling you the truth. Before God and man, Nigerians are animals. It doesn't matter uh, how you wish to cover it with your, with your local pride. It doesn't matter to us how you wish to maybe see yourself. The fact of the matter is as long as you are a Nigerian, you are an animal. You can't reason. Because my question to you is very simple. You, as a Nigerian, created in 1914 by the British, can you go to Britain and create a country? The answer is no. Therefore, they are superior to you. And the only thing you can be superior to, of course, is your pet to keep in the house. And everybody knows that a pet is an animal. So that is why you're a British animal. That's who you are. And you never change. That's where your life is going to be forever and ever. Britain fought the war. Not Alamajiri, not the zoo. 
Therefore, this year in 2020, we must be very vigilant. Dear friends, we must redouble our efforts because our enemies have redoubled their efforts to deny us media space and to use certain journalists of evil extraction to discourage our people from following the path of truth and light which IPOB represents. One thing is able. Anywhere he is seen in Biafra land, my goodness, he will get the IPOB treatment. He has been paid by the Fulani North to spread falsehood and propaganda against IPOB. The only institution the Fulani Caliphate is afraid of. I said the only one, only IPOB. We are the only ones safeguarding our land. Without IPOB, they would have overrun us by now. Everybody knows this as a fact. In Lagos, people without shame, no honor, no shame. Very, very sad indeed. They are doing the work of the enemy. BBC is among them. You see BBC? BBC is amongst them. You see BBC? I am, the day it will happen, I will tell you, I told you so. Disassociate yourselves from BBC. They are full of agents. Britain sent them to destroy us. Look at the way they were gloating over the 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 mess made by Supreme Court by announcing hope. You should have seen the way BBC was. Oh my goodness, BBC, unbelievable. Some of you don't know that during the war, Reuters were bought over. Go and Google it. Britain bought over. We were giving them money to doctor their news in 1968. Go and redo some research. I'm tired of researching for my people. It's making us very lazy. BBC, we are the forefront of false news dissemination against Biafra. That is why they can kill us a million times. They will never report it. Never in the truth. Never, ever, ever. Some of you do not know that they ganged up and they have their periodic meetings against Biafra. A lot of European countries, a lot of European countries know that Biafra is the light in Africa. So what they have done very cleverly is to say to Britain, if you can keep them contained within Nigeria, please keep doing so. We don't want those people to come and emerge uh, as an independent nation because once they do that, the whole of Africa will open up and uh, the Africans will see the light. And we don't want them to see the light. We need people to, at least, we can measure ourselves against. We are human beings and they are animals. But when, they, oh, you, G, black people, black. How is that we can reason sometimes? How is we can reason? We must be vigilant this very year. Very, very vigilant. When we keep quiet, don't think nothing is happening. This is my first broadcast for the year. A lot is happening behind the scenes. A lot. A lot is happening. We are working very hard to dismantle the zoo, and most of our work are being made manifest on a daily basis. Facebook is against us. Google is against us. If you go to Google, no matter the positive news, however, the only ones they wish to highlight for people to read is, oh, uh, uh, Nam the Kano is a froster. So says um, uh, what's other? Uh, IPOB will put uh, Igbos in diaspora in trouble. <laughs> Oh dear. Life is very strange. Those who we are bought over by the full need to destroy our people are claiming that those who are defending our people in truth and in every honesty are the ones who are fraudsters. Do you see the irony of it all? It's just like um, Yeti Yala, the terrorist, the fourth largest terrorist group in the world. As, uh, because the part of, of course, you, you know Yeti Yala is one of hates men. Going out and saying that People are terrorists. When they are the ones actually, they go to your village, they rape, they pillage, they kill. They come out and they say, "Oh, there are terrorists in this village. Uh, come and ban them." Uh, Amala, me ban them. There are terrorists in this village. What are the ones doing the killing? Something is happening in our land. Nobody can come out and say that they bought Nam the Colonel's conscience. No one. But once in a while, uh, Dennis Abo will write something and give to Vanguard. Vanguard will publish for them. And Google will put it on, you know, just to discourage her. You know, we are very feeble, very feeble. We, our, our conviction is not very deep. When, oh, oh, eh, eh, look, look at what I heard. Oh, but you don't know if it is true or not. Have you asked? Have, have, have you even considered the possibility? I did not take money from Nigeria when I was in detention, when I was in jail, when I came out and they were trooping to my house to come and buy me over and I said, no, is it now? 
that they have killed my parents that I will give people should be, get some sense, please. Some are so daft. Some of you will need to go and purchase sense. It's very, very important. Facebook is against us, so it's Google, BBC, and other foreign media outlets. They have been contracted to help the likes of Channel TV and corrupt some local corrupt zoo journalists to discredit IPOB, but they have failed. We need to redouble all our efforts to make sure we have multiple relay stations across Biafra land. IPOB family members in diaspora are hereby mandated to make sure there is a minimum of five separate relay stations in every state in Biafra land. That is the way we can counter our enemies. They only succeeded in stifling us 50 years ago due to a very successful British run media blockade all over the world. Some of you do not know. The now seemingly respected Reuters news agency, we are bribed by Britain to present the British Biafra war in a way that demonized our eternal leader, the same thing they are trying to do to us today. But of course, we are very savvy. This is IPOB. They know they are not going to succeed. They are wasting their time and their resources. When you observe the attitude of most Nigerians towards things that matter, then. <laughs> As somebody who quite rightly commented, you know what slavery lasted for as long as it did, as it did, 250 years. Our, I don't know, selling our people did not start today, during slavery. You know, when slavery ended, <laughs> some of our people were not happy that it ended because uh, their means of income dried up. The same thing is happening today. Somebody makes a living by doing boy boy work of Alamajiri that didn't go to school. And you are telling them that Biafra will come, everybody will be free, people will be, be this new shiny nation will emerge in Africa. They will tell you no, they will prefer to be serving the Alamajiri master. Look at Hopus of them. Do you think anything is good, good is going to come out of him? Just, just consider it for a moment. He just said that he came forth, but all of, now all of a sudden he's number one. That is an imagined mathematics for you. I have never seen such, such ruling in my life before. Somebody who came forth is now number one. Oh dear. Oh dear. Today, many of these people will continue to sell us our harness and they will continue to sell us every blessed day. Ask yourself if they were serious. They claim that your leaders, why did you not hold an event in our land to mark the 50th uh, uh, anniversary? of what they claim to be the end of what I call open facilities in the zoo. Why did you go to Lagos? Why? Because they know if they do it in our land, the land will come after them. Why did you do it in our land? Why not? But they ran to Lagos. And some of you are writing, oh, they're in Lagos. They're at Muson Center. In Lagos, not in your land. And you call them your leaders. Our people are very, very funny indeed. How long are we going to allow ourselves, we Bia France, to be deceived? When are we going to learn? We warned you that PVC and voting is a trap. Unless you're prepared to defend your vote, some of you did not see reason. Because once you get your PVC and you go and you vote, what you have done is to say to those people, do as you wish. Because you can vote for the best man or woman from your town, from your village, from your state or from the central district, they get to Abuja and the Fulani cabal will decide who goes. All they need to do is, oh, don't worry, just partake in the process. They come to Abuja. That vote, that voting you're voting in a human banner, the result of it will be decided by a tanko in Abuja, not by you in the polling booth, oh, I have voted, this is my card. You're wasting your time. What they are now going to do is that they will go mute for some time. They will keep quiet. And after a while, after a short while, you will see them, they'll come out again. You know, go and register. Oh, go and vote. Have you voted? Have you registered? It's our turn. Everybody knows it's not possible. They use one thing or the other to get you people into that groove, into that frame of mind of stupidity and ignominy. You will fall for it. Who line and sinker at the end of the day, you, you end up um, holding the very thin end of the wedge. Look at him, State. Is he not gone? Is he not gone? When I told you not to vote, what did you say to me? Oh, you want to bring trouble in our land? You want to, uh, you, those are the people who are against the uh, uh, advancement of Fundi or Gadirundi. Idiots. They didn't go to school. 
people who went to school only two months in four years, the rest is strike. You want to compare yourself with people that are actually properly educated. Or you want us to start speaking with Queen's grammar so you will know. I speak the way I do so our mothers in the village can understand what we're saying. Come on, go, go. They think they know better than us. We know more than you do. You are not actually educated. We are the ones who are educated. And we in IPOB that are educated, they're calling us miscreants. Can, can you believe such nonsense? We told them that your PVC cannot work. After going to court, some of them are crying as even before, even when uh, Peter be lost, they, they came and they're crying. Like the little village children they are. We said, I said, I told you, PVC will never ever work unless you are prepared to vote, stand there and defend it. But you know what they have done? You can stand there and defend it now. As maybe you know, did. Stand and defend it. They'll, they'll leave you. And after six or seven months, you go to Abuja, they will declare a house, a full animal, not house, please, I'm sorry, not house, a full animal puppet, they declare him the winner. Now, they deserve to announce in, in, in Uhawasa, they now come down to enforce it with Nigerian army and police band with their, uh, with their AK-47 assault rifles, ready to kill anybody at will once you rise in protest. That's it. Some of you, let me now explain something to our people. This is where European media must take some blame. Let me tell Nigerians what they don't know. The time that we are clamping down on IPOB with such brutality and ferocity, what they were trying to do is to make it impossible for you to come out on the streets to protest against them, not to protest for any change. But when you are busy writing your nonsense in Ibadan or Lagos, hey, those people, those IPOB, they are troublemakers, those people from the East, they are trying to cause trouble. Because some of you don't reason. Because you compromised your conscience when IPOB was being targeted, brutalized, dehumanized, and killed. You supported the Nigerian government. Now it is your turn. Do you know why the zoo said, do you know why Malami said, Amote group should not stand, this Yoruba vigilante? Because they are hoping that uh, we, being their friends, will say, because of what Yorubas did during the war, because of that, we won't support them. This is the, and then they will clamp down on the Yorubas. They think we are stupid. You see? But we are sensible. That is why IPOB tonight we are pledging and God in heaven is my witness, that we will support Hamoteku, we will support Yoruba in any way, shape, or form they want it, we will support them. To hell with, uh, with uh, Alamajri Fulani, to hell with them. I said to hell with them. To hell with them. And that is why they know now Hamoteku will stay. They, they made that comment hoping to elicit a response from IPOB. Our response is that we will support our Yoruba cousins. We will support them. We will support them. We will support them. The, uh, you people are dreamers. You think you can be using people all the time. You think because a section of Yoruba media was against IPOB during the Fulani, uh, during the Janja we clam down. Because of that, we'll be again. Now we're not like that. We are civilized. We are beer friends. We are different from other people. Very, very different. So, Operation Amoteku, this Yoruba vigilante initiative has come to stay. It has come to stay. It's not going anywhere. Your PVC and your voting is crap. You may vote in Enugu and put in somebody you like. If that person doesn't play ball with the government of the zoo, they go to their Supreme Court in Abuja, they remove the person, they come back with a squadron of soldiers to guard that very person into office. And he will go to his village and his village say, Oh, oh Chineka Gozelan is our turn. God has blessed us, our turn, and that's it. <laughs> we hardly reason very well sometimes. This new Alamajri judiciary. Where Tanko is the head, <laughs> common arithmetic is no longer. I'll go to the arithmetic later on. Common plus and minus of numbers. How can 800 and something thousand people go to registered voters, eligible voters, 800 and something thousand? And then the final vote by the Supreme Court of Nigeria is 900 and something thousand. 
where did they get the rest of the numbers from? Nobody can answer. I said, oh, it's the Supreme Court. It's the final court of the land. It's as God wants it. Supreme Court. Can you believe such nonsense? It's Supreme Court. Supreme Court. Five people were registered to vote, for instance, for example. Those five people voted. And somebody came forth. No APC House of Assembly member. No, no. Maybe now they'll start playing some of them to defect to APC. All of a sudden, the case went to Supreme Court and Supreme Court said that it's eight people voted. But the record from INEC says five. Supreme Court is now telling us that, uh, that eight people should have voted. Unbelievable. And you, you claim you love Nigeria. Nigeria is my country. I, I, I can't understand for the life. She did, or is it the same? Is it God that made other animals that made him poor? Is it the same God in heaven? Or something else made you? Where are these, these judges or justices, whatever they call them, which planet do they inhabit? Which planet, I ask? Are, are, you, are you sure black people are normal? Are, she did, are you sure that God in heaven is seeing what is happening? Are you sure that blacks in Africa, are you sure we are created by the same God that made other people? Five people voted. There's a dispute. You, they went to court. The court is now telling us that eight people should have voted. She make a man. Oh dear Lord, have mercy. But the vote will not stand. Not in Imo State. It will stand in Imo State. <laughs> This is direct Fulani rule. That's what it is. The best they can do is to call for fresh elections. I'm saying it tonight. The best they can do, because we are not going to allow one Fulani puppet in Hopo Southern Man to be in Owele, bringing Ruga and, uh, and livestock in Owele. No, no, no. It won't happen. They better call for fresh elections with international observers. They will be there. They will monitor. They will announce the results, and that will be the end of it. All this, this thing that Tanko and Abakiari is doing, appointing, <laughs> appointing leaders, appointing politicians for us from Abuja. No, it won't work. It won't work. We are IPOB, and they know what we're going to do. The only way out is fresh elections in Imo. I don't give a damn. I don't like it. I don't give a damn. Any, I'm not saying that was useless, but, but we cannot allow them all to impose somebody from Abuja. I am warning. I am warning. I am warning and warning and warning again. Remember my warnings before that you ignored. Today you're crying. You see, Imo State, if we allow them to impose somebody in Imo, believe you me, everything else you do from here on in is, uh, is babash. They'll wait for you in Abuja. Once you come to Abuja, they give it to the puppet. And we are finished. That was how they destroyed the great Hausa race. We will be destroyed if we allow hope of them. We will be destroyed. Let the people of Imo decide. Abuja cannot decide. Tanko cannot decide. Abakiari cannot decide. The Fulani Caliphate cannot decide for us. We must decide. If you're saying that 900,000 people should have voted, okay, all well and good. Let them go to the polls and determine. Not federal high court. People saying, uh, uh, federal high court is the highest law in the land. That is rubbish. It's the highest Sharia court in the land. And we do not obey nor submit to Sharia court nor Sharia law. We are their friends. And there is no shortage of fake prophets that will carry their news for them. That is, we must begin to reason. We must begin to ask ourselves questions. We must, we must begin to be self-aware and self-critical. We must ask ourselves very pertinent questions. This way we are going is it, is it going to be good for us or not as a people? We must continue to ask. Why is it that anytime any idiot that we know is compromised comes out and says something that God told him, we start jumping up and down like a bunch of fools. All these fake prophets misleading our people. The day of reckoning will come and all the pleadings will fall on deaf ears, I'm, I can assure you. We can all remember how we formed the BSS. Have you forgotten? The same BSS we formed, they said it's not good. Some Yoruba people said, no, it's not good. They went and they formed their own. Operation Amoteku. Do you know the funniest part? And what I regard to be the hide of hypocrisy 
is the total condemnation of the formation of BSS by Yoruba journalists, despite seeing the carnage that the Fulani savages brought to Biafra land. But when they faced the same problem, the daughter of um, of um, a family friend leader, Jeff Ashoranti, was killed. They quickly rallied and formed something similar to what we did with BSS. This is the level of hypocrisy that caused God to curse the black man. We are hypocrites. And all of them, all the Yoruba intelligentsia, their academics, all the Yoruba journalists, all the Yoruba lawyers, everybody is in line. They support it. They support it. But when we formed our own, <laughs> they are, of course, <laughs> you know them now, people who are hungry, looking for one alamajri to, to pick them up. What is the difference between BSS and uh, Moteku? None. Just that we started it. We saw something we knew. Look at the same Umahi, those who we are behind. The position of IPOB because of BSS. They negate because they are blind. These are blind people, blind mice. You see, Uruha, they cannot see. They can they are blind people. Accidental politicians. That's who they are. They are blind. Very blind. But today Europe are supporting their own. Do you see why Europe are progressing as well? Do you see why you build your houses in Europa land? See the way the reason? They identify a problem. They articulate a solution, implement it. You in the in the east, you don't uh, you don't articulate, you don't see a problem. You even those who want to solve it, you go against them. We prefer solutions, and you come against us. That is your life. That is the way you are wired. That is where you are. You can see where we are today. Uh, uh, now, my history, uh, we wanted to, to do it before. Is it the BSS you disbanded? Who 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 will join them in Biafra land? They said before, Forest Guard, nobody joined them because the order from here is this no Biafran should join anything being organized by any governor because they are working hand in hand with Fulani, Alamajri, and the North to destroy our land. They know they, they can form anything they like, they can come to paper and pay useless journalists to write rubbish. We are going to form this vigilante, we are going to form that now rubbish. They know it's not possible. Who are going to be the full soldiers? Not IPOB. Who? Where will you recruit? I'm asking you. If it's not IPOB, I'm sure that next time when we say we are forming, uh, no, not forming because BSS is always there. We are relaunching BSS. Nobody will complain. When next I tell you not to vote, you will listen and you will not vote. And can you imagine if Nigerians had listened and? didn't vote in last election by now everywhere will be peaceful there will be orderly disintegration of the zoo everybody will be on their own a new constitution will be agreed and arranged everything will be done peacefully because you won't see anybody to shoot but they don't listen they they just don't know what's wrong with black people they never listen they never ever listen I'm on Facebook now, according to analysis, if you look at the BBC, you turn it upside down, you put it in, you vote, uh, 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 somebody will imagine, here they will come, and the will be beautiful. Rubbish. Pure bunker. Rubbish. They wait for you in Abuja. Come to Abuja and they will, they will destroy you there. That's what I have done to you. I don't know who he is and I don't want to know him. Is even part and parcel of the problem from the past. But even people must decide who will govern them. If you keep quiet now, we are gone. You see, most state, if they have done it now. Oh, leave it to God, leave it to the Supreme Court. Once you leave it, it's over. Completely over. You have set a very ugly precedent. They will go back and they will say, You need your have us who's on him in this is the, in 2020. This happened. That's it. It is called legal president we must insist that we'll be voting in Imo state that's our campaign there must be fresh elections in Imo. there must be the people must decide let the people decide not supreme court in abuja let the people decide as simple as that let them invoke the doctrine of necessity and ensure that democracy remains you people don't know what Fulan is planning for you. You don't. You have no idea. Now I'm saying it. It sounds like fairy tale when it happens. Oh, oh now the kind of said so. I apologize because before I was attacking you. I never knew what you're saying. Well, of course, I'm always right. 
you don't want to hear it, but I will tell you, we are on this platform, on this IPOB, on this microphone, on this radio Biafra, we are always right. The time now, I must say, is nearly, should I say, uh, 18 minutes to the top of the hour, regardless of where you are. This is a live presentation. There are uh, people who are called Igbo One Nigerians. They always specialize in deceiving other Igbo people to believe in Nigeria. There are those in the so-called South South or South 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 South. I don't know how many Souths they need. I said before, we keep adding South 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 until you find them very close to Brazil. So I don't know how many Souths they need. All of our people, the Biafrans, former Eastern region, all of us, as a people, as a people, must rise up and say we want to be free. We must rise up and say we want to be free. Europe is always ahead of us. We're always ahead. Do you know, because of this operation, what they're doing, you will no longer hear of Fulani of people raping or killing a Yoruba woman, Fulani people destroying farms, and it's gone. But today I saw a video of our mothers lamenting. Somewhere in, in Anambra, in Imo, crying, and their farm has been destroyed. IPAB cannot be everywhere. People sometimes ask us, oh, what, uh, what do you do? You know, people ask so many foolish questions. The money we give you, what do you do with it? And I said to them, the lives that we have lost in defense of Biafra land, what are you going to do about it? Do you know how many lives we are losing every blessed day? Do you know how many war fronts we are involved in in Biafra land? Do you know why the Fulanis don't want to talk about it? They will not get their newspapers to talk about it because they know we are defeating them. They know we are destroying them as they come for their settlements. They know we are disarming them. They know that very well. That's what they want. So you want me to, every day I come, I will come on the air and I will tell you, oh, uh, IPOB raised uh, $5,000 last month and we did this with this, we did this with this. People are so foolish. We have a case in Abuja. Uh, let me not go too far because the world is listening. The world is listening. The Igbo one Nigeria is with us like any other than the Igbo affiliate for governors, the Nzukon, the Nzuzu, or whatever they call themselves, and they're hired online so called intellectual, <laughs> inconsequential buffoons who are in essence agents of Flannel Caliphate always claim they know too much than those. Uh, uh, they, are, they call us miscreants and uh, urchins, and uh, your urchin. urchin asked you not to vote. You voted, and now you're crying. <laughs> uh, do you have me? Uh, that's nothing we will not see. But converse in actual sense, they are the ones with the herd mentality that somebody quite rightly argue. They have nothing in their brain. They go, they pick up dictionary. They, they, they look at words. They, if, you, if you think I'm lying, go and interview any of them tomorrow. Just put microphone in their mouth and say, okay, speak about that thing you wrote two days ago. You see, ha, 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 they won't know what to say because they are dumb. They are dumb. They opposed, they opposed me. The same you about today that formed Lamento they opposed me when I formed B, not me, when IPOB formed BSS. Because I only lead IPOB, I only represent IPOB, their views and their opinions. And that's what I represent. I was opposed, called all sorts of names. I was summoned by Senator Baribe. I, I, I had to answer him. He summoned me to his house and I had to go and answer him. He, he asked me, are you armed? I said, no. He said, why BSS? I explained everything to him. He, saw, he said he saw reason in it. But those who didn't have the courage to summon me to come and see them, I call it summoning because he's my senior, he's my elder. If he summoned me, I will go and see him. That's our tradition, that's our culture. He summoned me, I went to his house to go and see him. So I believe I want to see him. And maybe some of you don't know this, or maybe you know, I don't know. He asked me why BSS, and I told him why. And he saw reason in it. Or at least, you know, if he did not agree with the entire modus operandi, but saw that there was a semblance of reason in the, you know, in the idea behind it to defend our land. Everybody they saw that there was something in defending our land. Because I asked him, do you want our mothers to continue to be raped, their crops destroyed? He said, no. I said, that's what we're trying to do. He said, okay, as long as you're not armed, you're not going to fight. I said, no, of course, no fighting, no arms, nothing. 
But those who did not have the courage to invite me to see them, they ran and gossiped to their Fulani masters. And they say we should be proscribed. They stormed my house and killed my men. As a result of which, my parents took ill and today they are dead. The Yorubas have done something. What have you done? Apart from one or two of you idiots on social media writing, what have you done? Nothing. The same nonsense every blessed day. Anything the flanny does goes. Anything the flanny does is okay. Oh, if they bring up, oh, fine. They bring uh, uh, that uh, uh, driver to Korocha that said he's contesting before for governor, whatever his name is. It's okay. But even if you bring one Harana from Kanu and make him the governor, oh, fine, by also, it's the will of God. Very funny people. Very funny people. Some stupid rubbish in, in Lagos. In Lagos, oh. oh dear. Because their roads are so bad that they are that they are masters, the Obas and the MS cannot travel to the east. They can't come to the Afro land because there's no road, there's no airport, all the airports are closed, all the roads are bad. So why don't those idiotic slaves from Enugu and the world, why, hello chaps, why don't you come to Lagos? And they land to, what corner Lagos? This is what happened inside Lagos. Useless, useless set of people. Intellectuals. If this if there is that's what we call intellectuals gathering together, then, then there is a problem. Then we should shut down all the investors because you're producing nothing. The person that made sense was Patrick Tommy. The person that made slight sense because he he knows he, he, he knows <laughs> he's he's the only visionary amongst them. When next we start, there will be Biafra because we will fight that war until the end of time. If they want us to fight the war for hundred years, we'll fight it because this day, this 2020, we know now. What our fathers never knew between 67 and 70. Now we are far more equipped intellectually to fight this very battle. And watch us decimate the zoo from within, piece by piece. Then in your next life, when you hear IPOB and you hear Nam Khan, you will say, Yes, they came and they did what they said they were going to do. So I mean, say, oh, baby, oh, what have you done? Are you, got... you, what have you done? nothing if uh, if they bring up okay good oh. they bring um uh, they bring here okay it's even better they bring uh, uh alice which way oh fine anything they give you from flat you take i an intellectual intellectualism <laughs> back walk ndara the same local outfit the yoruba people and their media king they kicked against the neighbor land <laughs> And they formulated other propaganda against us. Is today what they are doing in Yoruba land. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. That is your lot in life when you have traitors and cowards as men and leaders. The same Ohanese and useless Igbo leaders that criticized and cajoled and castigated me for forming BSS without arms to protect our people against terrorists, against foreign terrorism. Ah, today, praising Europe. Can you believe that? Me and Wadokan was praising the Yoruba for forming a motekun to defend Yoruba land. But when we did something, they were against us. The highest form of hypocrisy. So they cannot turn around and say, oh, uh, those, those intellectual, you know, we are intellectual miscreants. You know, we are miscreants, but we're intellectual. Those intellectual miscreants, that thing they did is very good, or they will never say it. But when a Yoruba man does it, it's very good. But when their own does it, oh no, it's very bad. That is <laughs> a leadership for you in <laughs> Ebola. Black people, Miss <laughs> G. Very black indeed. Very, very sad indeed, I must say. And they have degraded, the you see how clever they are, I told you. They've degraded the illegal, and what they call is illegal. Uh, 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 but they have Sharia police, they have his bar. They have what is called a civilian JTF with AK-47 in the north. Uh, they have uh, all manner of um, vigilantes armed and from the north. That once you try to defend your mother, your wife, and your family, you are a terrorist. Uh, you are illegal. What you're doing is outside the law. 
That's according to Alamati. Allow me to reiterate. Any day, I'm saying this now very clearly. I know that some some Afonja, those are called the Afonja Yoruba. Those that come from the stock that will always remain loyal to the caliphate. The Afonja Yorubas within the Yoruba leadership will be saying to the people, oh, don't believe what Nam Dekan is saying. They, they want to bring us out and then abandon us. We are men of honor. Men of honor. And they know it. And they know that we know that they know that we are men of honor. We will support you every step. We will commit our men into what you're doing if you want us to. Because what you have done, what you have done, is the only way forward for the protection of lives and properties of Yoruba people. And we commend it. We commend it in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. We say kudos and well done to you. If you need our help, you will get it. You want us to remain in a zoo. We are a fourth-placed individual in a governorship race in Imo State. He is now all of a sudden the winner. From fourth, four, number four, to number one. Yeah, my goodness. How many of you now still believe that uh, when we call for boycott, it should boycott? It has now been decided in in uh, in uh, this thing in in Abuja. When public discourse, as somebody was quite rightly commenting earlier today, when public discourse is is filled with people that find grammatical sequencing more more alluring than common sense you know that you are in one almighty mess this is our our lot now in biafra land the time has come for us to put to pocket our what i call primitive intellectualism that is slowly destroying us as a people and allowing fallen to take over our lives to the point of now appointing who is going to be your governor that's what they mean do all your voting, all your campaigning, all your nonsense, all your ballot snatching. At the end of the day, you go to court in Abuja, and Abuja decides what happened. And then they will come and tell, Aba uh, uh, is it Abaka? Uh, this is what we're going to do. They say, God told you. He will come out and say, oh, God told me uh, that, uh, 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 is it, uh, uh, who is it? That's not, not the sensible governor in our land. Oh, goodness me. Uh, God said that they will be removed. They've told him that what is going to happen. They just say, let's see the direction of the people. Some of you don't, don't even know what is kite flying. Do you know what is kite flying? It's a very subtle way to gauge your reaction before they do something. That's what they have just done with Mbaka. But it's the, it's the work of God. Hey, and this UG. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This time we are living in right now is so desperate that only the discerning can see the handwriting on the wall. This is not the time for zoo intellectual garbage. This is the time for action. And that action has to start from Imo State because Fulani Caliphate have stolen Imo State from us because they control the guns, they control the judiciary, they control the news outlets. They have fools that hide under the banner of Western religion to condition our minds for slavery. They made it look as if it was um, that idolatrous, graven image worshiping in Baka that divinely decreed that hopeless on them should win. This is the level of our hopelessness in Biafra land, which IPOB is seeking to correct morning, noon, and night. We don't have the time nor place for such nonsense. We must speak the truth, and that truth is coming forth. The Fulani Caliphate and the British before them have succeeded in rendering our land useless because there is always they, they always find willing tools and traitors amongst us, determined to do whatever it takes to serve their masters. The British started this nonsense with their warrant chief system, as I said earlier, which some communities converted to Igwe and Deze. The same nonsense that play now with governor's lodges across Biafra land, unless our people listen, Bayasa has fallen to APC. 
Imo has gone to APC. Anambra will go to APC next year. And before you know it, the stage is set for total flanization of our land. And by then it will be too late. Very, very late because our people do not listen. Only IPOB can be trusted to defend and save our land. Only IPOB. Those risking eternal Fulani slavery are those advising you to go against IPOB. Anybody asking you to rise against IPOB is working for Fulani Caliphate. There, there, and I've write it down a piece of paper. Anybody advising, go and look at their master, go and look at the person who sustains them or the person who buys them data. That person is a full and a stooge. That is the way it goes in our land, and that is something that we must correct as a people when it comes to politics in the zoo. We are dealing with wild beasts animals of the jungle we are dealing with low life scumbags that will sell their arm for crumbs falling off the master's table our land is completely encircled with your hannes and the ocean and him i don't know what they call themselves Ibo and all the rest of them that always travel to lagos this is a circle of conspirators they have come to enslave to condition no matter what the Fulani does these days, none of you get angry anymore, of course, except how you will be. They rape your mother. So it's another news. And that's just the news. You just dismiss it. No more righteous indignation. None. Because they have conditioned your mind. No matter what they do to you, you accept it. When we get our presidency, we will correct every single of such rubbish. The same people that went against IPOB that the ones today issuing press statements saying that Fulani headsmen uh, they have license to kill without arrest, but you killed your own people. You called the same people, the same headsmen who are licensed to kill. This is from the mouth of Ohaneze, Ohaneze and Yoshi. You, the same people who are licensed to kill, the same people who kill innocent men, women, and children without arrest. IPOB formed BSS to confront them. You were the ones that went to the same people and asked them to come and kill IPOB family members. But today you're talking. That full and heads men are licensed to kill. If they are licensed to kill, who is going to stop them? When somebody is a is a rampaging madman or mad woman, somebody, some people must stop that very person or group of persons. Who is going to stop them? It's not IPOB. Who else can stop them? Two of us have formed Amoteku to go to stop the Fulanis doing something in their land. Who is going to defend our land? Different IPOB. Who will do it? Because those you're hoping to go and recruit, they're all IPOB. Oh, oh my goodness. Those, those people, I don't, I know that the hottest place in hell is reserved for them. Very evil men. Common apology, they can't apologize that they got it wrong. That what they did was wrong. No, they won't do it. But all we do is we come on Facebook and write rubbish every blessed day, some of us, talking nonsense. Is the zoo safe? The answer is no. Southern Katuna will form their own militia because or else they will be decimated. We are under constant attack. Southern Katuna residents cry every blessed day. This full and agenda with the kill people every blessed day. And what me about one Nigeria every day there is death, there is mayhem. They use a combination of media blackouts and British connivance to, to escape what I call international scrutiny and exposure. They go to court and they say to you, you, you no, no, voting no longer counts in Nigeria. They don't like voting. No matter how you vote, they'll go to Supreme Court and they'll change it. The same thing is happening in our land. Dr. Hanese have now conditioned you. Whatever happens in Biafra land, oh, you just to go with it. Until until you get your presidency they are complaining amoteko is opc in disguise who will do the work in the west not opc who's going to do it for them because they recognize it's opc that will do it the same way in Bia i said biafra land the same way in biafra land only ipob can defend our people no other person can the same way in the west 
only OPC can form a motorcycle to defend the white people the same way that only I said only IPOB can. You don't want people to have their own militia or people to defend them, but in the north, you went outside the constitution to create your own little little groups. The Sharia police. The, the other day they said they arrested 10 prostitutes. Sharia police, not set up by the constitution of Nigeria, but Sharia police in the north. And the same person is telling you, you cannot form vigilante to defend your, you cannot form your own police, but they have four or five police, different police, um, 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 should I say, I won't call it department, formations in the north. Four different police formations in the north. But if you come to do your understand or not, I want to do is illegal. PSS is, is illegal. You cannot do it. But uh, these people here, these Sharia police, are arresting the two um, um, street workers. Are they established by the laws of the land or by the constitution? The answer is no. But because it is Fulani, who anything they want, they get. Anything Fulani wants, they get. And the only people who can stop them, which is IPOB, all. Our people do is to gossip against or write rubbish against that people to gossip, including uh, the Dennis Abos of this world of uh, their claims as a journalist for Vanguard. That's all they do. They are the ones killing you. These are the people killing you. Anybody asking you to be against IPOB, investigate that very person, either himself or his master, he is a Fulani slave. They are the ones that want you to be Fulanized. They want to Islamize you. They want to destroy you. That is the way it is. And that is also a fact of life. For some of you who may not know, that is a fact of life. Death and destruction everywhere. Why do you have all of this? There's a place called um, Iribwe Land in Plateau. Three, you know, this no longer makes the news. On January 8th, 327 people killed. It's no longer news. When they organized to save themselves, they asked them to go to to DPO of the local area, the same DPO that is Fulani Janja with Alamajiri during the killing. Before we know it, the, my only happiness is that all these broadcasts we make, you know, we have them stored in archive somewhere. That's why I love IPOB. Anytime something happens, they just I, I don't know how to do it. They're gonna pick out one one broadcast where such issue was treated in the past and revelations made about what is to happen in the future. They just play it. And some of you are repenting. And I'm glad that some of you are repenting. Because I don't hate anybody. We don't hate anybody. I can't come out and say something nasty about somebody who is a pleasant human being. It's not possible. If I do that, that means I'm not a nice person myself. If I come out to castigate anybody who is innocent, then um, I'm no longer doing the work of Chukot Kabiyan. Anybody I tell you is bad, is bad. Go up, down, sideways, the person is bad. Yeah, in the fullness of time, you will see it. And I've told you. You're telling me you have leaders in a land. In Enugu State, they came to Nimbo, they killed us. And when they were killing us, Governor, if Anugwani was calling, uh, somebody they said it was Buhari then. The person never answered. He called the 82 Division, they never answered. He called the police, they never answered until they finally finished killing our people and they left. Only then did they come. From then till now, those that tried to do something to stop such occurrence in the future, they conspired against them. They brought in Flanny to kill IPOB. Therefore, if your mother has been raped, if your community has been invaded, if your farm produce have been destroyed, blame it on Ohaneze. Blame it on Igbo governors. Blame it on those that claim they are living in Lagos and in Abuja. Doing intellectual work <laughs> for the Fulani. That he wants to blame, not us. Because today, how many of you have called to support the efforts we are making in, in Ebony to stop Fulani headsmen from taking foothold there? Some of you don't know. You don't know. Do you? 
327 killed. And who is doing the killing? All Fulani. <laughs> they are the ones doing the killing. They are the only people allowed to kill other people. Remember when they went to, to my barrister's house and destroyed everything and killed 10 people there? But I've been waiting since the bandits ambushed the Nigerian Air Force. I think it was Thursday of last week. In a place called um, Brennan Gwari Road in Kaduna State. Yes, Kaduna Brennan Gwari Road. Were any houses destroyed? These are bandits. They killed Nigeria Air Force. I'm asking Nigeria Police, Nigeria Army, DSS, did you burn people's houses in Kaduna as a result of this? The answer is no. But if this were to happen anywhere else, they will come, they will destroy buildings. They are still setting our markets on fire. When I told when this uh, fire outbreak started, I told them it was caused by Fulani people that this was terrorism. They didn't believe me. Today is happening. Now they are killing people now in Kaduna. These are Fulani bandits in the north, killing people in the north. Have they stopped? The answer is no. Anybody arrested? No, of course not. Nobody has been arrested. That you are telling me that I should be belong to one Nigeria. And they're even telling themselves to speak out against um, uh, uh, insecurity, the way they spoke out during Jonathan's regime. Those who are doing the killings, those who are doing the killings in the north are all Fulani people. That is a fact of life. That is only what they know to do. Because uh, tomorrow they will come and claim that um, the lawlessness in the country is caused by people who are from outside. But I commend, I must commend, the lives of Bishop Matthew Hassan Guka. I think I pronounced his name correctly. Who said right, quite rightly so as, or try to echo what we've been saying, that the only difference between the federal government and Boko Haram is that Boko Haram is holding a bomb. The federal government of Nigeria, believe you me, is a terrorist creation. You know, America accused other, may accuse other countries of financing terrorism, but I'm telling you, I am telling our listeners this evening, that the primary, the primary driver of terrorism in Nigeria is the Nigerian government. They are the terrorists. But uh, by the day you realize it, it may be a bit um, too late. But we keep saying it, that they are the having out of terrorism in the zoo, in the zoo. And they claim, as I said before, that illiteracy is the cause of their problem. They don't go to school, they've been ruling Nigeria. They are the ones ruling. They control NMPC, they control customs, they control the air, they control the sea, they control land. Everywhere, they're everywhere. Stealing money, making money, looting money, but they don't go to school. And now they are saying that because of their high level of illiteracy that more terrorists will emerge from the northern part of Nigeria. But Britain loves them. In fact, the more terrorists they produce, the more Britain loves them. The more they are reducing the number of people. I have said this thing before and I will say, it. I don't know how correct I am, but something tells me that it is right. Somebody somewhere loves the population reduction work of terrorism in Africa. The only way you can solve that, I think I, I read that Boris Johnson said he will try the best he can to defend Christians. The best way for you to defend Christians is to make sure that Nigeria is divided. Divide Nigeria, you will save lives. Keep Nigeria one and people keep dying. As simple as that. Yes, he, he actually said it in the Telegraph. Telegraph reported that Boris Johnson, the new UK Prime Minister, said that he will protect persecuted Christians abroad following a bishop carried out a review in their place. How do you, this is what I want the Southern Cardinals to understand. I want the Middle Belt to understand, and I want our people in the West to also understand that the only way to save lives in Nigeria is by dividing Nigeria. If you say no to the division of Nigeria, the Fulani Islamization agenda, or should I say the Fulanization agenda of the Caliphate North will continue unabated. Allow me to repeat. If you insist, I'm saying this both to, because what we can say is that once we have Biafra, the Northern Christians can come to Biafra and live in Biafra land, if they so wish. If you keep Nigeria as one, the drive to Fulanize Nigeria will continue relentlessly. It's something they've signed up to, and they must do it. That very religious space 
uh, or Christianity competing with Islam will not hold in Nigeria. It's impossible. Write it down somewhere. So what we are saying to Brother Johnson this very night is that the only way, the only way to ensure that lives are saved is to divide Nigeria. Let everybody go their own way, the same way we were before Lugard and the rest of his crew came along. Once you rise up to speak, I don't know if some of you actually know that Adamawa you actually blocked the highway in Adamawa. I don't know if some of you know this. And nobody was shot dead. Nobody was killed because it's happening in the north because of incessant kidnapping. But they tell you, oh, there is insecurity in the in the southeast. There is kidnapping in, in Uzakole. Everywhere across the north. I told them, I don't know how to say it in English, but I say it in the language of heaven. I can see Hagaba Hanu. They have killed so much people, spilled so much innocent Biafran blood that they have now turned and they are eating themselves. They have not, of course, they are still continuing. Killing people in the South, but they are also killing Christian minorities in the North. And I'm saying to the Christian minorities in the North, the only way you can be safe is in a nation called Biafra, only if Biafra comes. Only if Biafra comes, because even those who we are close to the God, even uh, I feel sorry for, for Sheikh Hussani. He's been locked up. Nobody's happening for his release. Sheikh Hussani has been framed and locked up. That is the Nigerian judiciary for you. That can wake up one morning and tell you that a man who came forth in an election is now number one, and everybody's clapping. They have locked up Sheikh Hussani, and nobody is campaigning for his release. He's done nothing. If you criticize them, you're locked up. Will Britain do anything about it? Of course not. Britain loves what is happening. They love what is happening. It is their zoo. They can treat the animals however they wish. The story in Imo State, before we bring our program to a close this very evening, the story in Imo State is a very funny one. It's a very funny one. And we must do this maths for the whole world to understand how funny it is. And we must do this very much for the world to understand that the only credible, the only credible way out of the mess in the state is for fresh elections to be held and for foreign observers to come in and to allow total live coverage of proceedings of that very electoral process. The idea of imposing hope, who's a them man, on the people of Imo. <laughs> it's, it's intolerable. I'm telling you the truth. Intolerable. And I'll tell you why. This is what the world must understand about Nigeria. When we, we're not, no longer saying that Nigeria is corrupt, Nigeria, Nigeria's judiciary is so primitive that it needs to, it needs help. Where the help will come from, I do not know. It needs help. And the sooner that zoo divides, the better for everybody. And I'll tell you why. A total of, listen carefully, according to INEC, the total number of people accredited to vote in Imo State, the total number was 823,743. Those allowed to vote, accredited to vote, according to INEC figures, Imo State governorship elections. But according to their figures, only 739 people, 485, voted. Out of that, 25,135 votes were cancelled or voided by INEC for irregularities, therefore leaving us with a total figure of 714,355, which means, in simple English, for, for somebody to emerge as the governor of Imo State, you must gain a majority of 714,355 votes, according to INEC. This is not according to anybody else, according to INEC. This is INEC. How, therefore, listen carefully, did the Supreme Court of Nigeria, sitting in Abuja, that we are not privy to the election, with INEC register in front of them, come to the ridiculous total of 927, 630, votes how was that done i neck listen carefully i neck 
submitted figures and said we accredited 823,000 people, 743, to vote in Imo State. Out of that, 739,485 actually voted. Now, what we are asking is, where did Supreme Court of Nigeria get 927,630 people? From where? Does it mean that Supreme Court in Abuja we are doing their own accreditation? As, uh, as 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 uh, I, I have I have no idea, I have no idea. But maybe the world or those they claim came to observe the elections can tell us something about this. It is quite perverse, very very perverse. Uh, and making has scored two hundred seventy three thousand votes, so two hundred seventy three thousand four hundred four votes. Uche Wosu one hundred ninety thousand three hundred and sixty four votes. Ifanya Rume one hundred fourteen thousand seven hundred seventy six votes. Who opposed them 96,458 votes, and other people, other parties had 39,433. Where did they get the number for, for who opposed or them to bump him up to 309,000? Did they add the, the votes of um, other parties? Because let us not be stupid. Uche Mosu campaigned under a different political party, registered and contested under a different political party, not APC. So my struggle is, where did they get 213 votes, 219,299 votes from to give to Hope Sotema from where? I, I can't see it here. Did they combine the, the I, I can't understand. Did they combine the vote of which Sarah Rume and the hope of Nobody knows. What what is going on? What type of country is Nigeria? What type of legal system? How can how can people now stand up and say that those people are learned, my learned lord, my learned whatever they call themselves? Do you see our problem with Nigeria? Can you at least understand our problem with Nigeria and see that Nigeria is unsalvageable? Nigeria is irredeemable. There is something devilish and satanic about Nigeria. They lie, they cheat. It is in their nature. Being a Nigerian means you're a liar. You are, you are, you are a liar, you're a cheat, you're a thief. That's the meaning of Nigeria. How can judges sitting in the Supreme Court come to this type of, um, should I say, devil's arithmetic? How did they come to these numbers? Because Nigeria is corrupt. The world needs to understand. The world, Britain must understand this. That unless somebody somewhere is enjoying the killing, the misery, and the pain that people are going through, the best thing to do is to allow people to go their separate ways. That is the only way to solve this very problem. And this <laughs> charade cannot hold any more state. It's important because I don't, people shouldn't analyze too much. The question is simple to the Supreme Court of Nigeria, to the Chief Justice Tanko, the aeroplane, Tona. What he needs to answer is this very simple question How did you get the extra votes to bump up INEC figures to 927,630? Where did I don't. Forget all the analysis because you know we are black people. If you're going to complex analysis, people will not understand what you're saying. What I'm asking you is this ask the Supreme Court a very simple question from where the accredited number of voters in Imo State was 823,743 votes. How did you get 900 or something? From where are you saying that we are those that came to vote for Hope or them and uh, I next said they won't accredit them? Is that is that the evidence before you? Because that is that is the only logical or plausible explanation that there were some people that came to vote and when they came to vote, the the annex said, Oh, who are you going to vote for? Oh, oh hope or them because of that, uh, you're not going to I won't accredit you. Is that what you're saying? Because if that is not what you're saying, the simple, I don't want people to overlabor this issue. It's very simple. The question we are asking the Supreme Court of Nigeria is, how did you arrive at a total figure, a ridiculous total figure 
of 927,630 when INEC themselves that conducted the elections on the ground only accredited 823,743 votes. And if I may ask, if you're saying that those who were not accredited, I'm just assuming that you're, say, you're saying that those who weren't accredited were going to vote for Uzodema, for Hope Uzodema. How would you know this? As a judge, are you not supposed to base your judgment or your ruling on the facts before you? How are you going to know that they would have voted for Hope Uzodema? The world must know that this is why we call Nigeria a zoo. Not that we hate anybody. The people, the animals, it's just unbelievable. And People, rather than coming out and looking at the injustice inherent in this ruling, people are saying, oh, leave it. Uh, the Supreme Court is highest court in the land. Let's leave it until next time. Was that what America did and they got to where they are today? Or any other civilized country for that matter? How can people learn from this? So that is why we are saying no, and we are not going to allow this travesty to continue. This is as a result of the situation that Britain put us in, as a result of the continuation of the one Nigeria mantra championed by Namdi Azikiwe, championed by Nzovo, championed by Aguironsi, championed by the Fulefus in Ohanese that has kept us in bondage till this very day. Those chains are what IPOB is here to break and we are breaking them, we are making progress and there is nothing, absolutely nothing that is going to stop us. That is why everybody must join IPOB. You must support IPOB. You must encourage IPOB. You must do everything within your powers to make sure that IPOB succeeds where you are because we are the only, I want to say last line of defense, we are the only line of defense between you and Islam, should I say, flanization of our homeland. Only IPOB. We are in a bony right now, fighting in the bushes to keep our land away from the vandals from Sahel. You should be grateful to IPOB every blessed day as you pray to God each day. Before, before you ask God to bless you, ask God to bless IPOB. Before every blessed day, because we are the ones defending our land. No other person, is. we are the ones dying to defend you. You may not know, but we are, we are the ones doing the very hard work. Some people in the diaspora from Ebony now, they know. Some of them called to thank IPAB to say they never knew what we were doing on the ground until people rang them from the village to say if not for IPAB, they would have been finished by now. That is why we know our work is divine. And that is why we know we have come here to fulfill a divine mandate. And that very mandate is the restoration of Biafra, which is where we proudly and unequivocally proclaim that Biafra is our religion. When you ask me my religion, my religion is Biafra. Because Chukwo Kika Biama, the God Almighty, Supreme Elohim in heaven, is our God. Those are the things you must know. We are not going away.